From a young age, I've played piano. And it was one of the only things that I genuinely enjoyed and was pretty good at. Up until ninth grade, piano was everything to me. I ate, slept, and breathed music. And I thought that nothing could take that away from me. When the pandemic hit and we were all forced to quarantine and start trying new things, not only did I dye my hair a very unpleasant orange color, but I also started debating competitively as well. You see, I started to debate because I wanted to practice my public speaking skills. But as grade nine went along, I realized that not only was I severely late on the debate train compared to my friends, but I had also spent a lot of my music time doing debate instead. You see, in a span of almost six months, my life completely shifted from being about music to being about debate. To compensate for the fact that I started debate late, I decided that since I had put so much effort into this shift in the first place, to just go all the way. I started paying for expensive debate classes. I started attending tournament after tournament. I once went for four months straight, where I had a tournament every single weekend. Other months, I had maybe one weekend off. Obviously, I burnt out. But yet I still continuously push myself so hard just so I could feel like half the debaters that my friends were. Now, you might be wondering, Michelle, we've heard this story before. What's so special about you trying your best and actually achieving your goals? Because I can proudly say right now that I can debate up to par with some of the better debaters in the country. And I think I'm pretty accomplished as well. And so, this mentality and the question that you're asking me right now is exactly the problem that I think today's society faces. Overcompensation as a way to hide our flaws. According to the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, overcompensation is defined as an excessive reaction to a feeling of inferiority, guilt, or inadequacy, leading to an exaggerated attempt to overcome that feeling. And so, basically what that means is, Society has normalized overcompensation constantly. And this has existed since far back in history. When gender norms became a thing, women were expected to cook and clean and take care of children so they can compensate and make up for the fact that they were physically weaker than a man or maybe less intelligent. I'm Chinese and as Asians, we're expected to be smart and academically gifted to compensate for the fact that we might not be typically built to do things like play sports. The type of overcompensation that I want to talk about today is the one that creeps up at our subconscious. It's the type that gets seen as working extra hard, when in reality, it's a coping mechanism to hiding your flaws. I want everyone to think about their life as a scale. It balances itself without you knowing. Similar to how our bodies can tell when a foreign disease appears, or maybe send us signals that we're stressed out and not sleeping enough. Our subconscious scale will always balance everything out. So every second and every ounce of energy that you put into one activity, you're taking away that time and energy from something else. What that means is, life has a funny way of staying seemingly perfectionist. It all comes down to the underlying feeling that maybe you're not good enough. You try one thing, and if it doesn't work out, you exploit yourself in different areas to try and create a tipping point for others to realize that you're maybe not bad at doing things. Eventually, overcompensation doesn't seem like over, but rather what is expected of you. I push myself so hard in debate to the point where anything less than 150% seemed like I was getting washed or getting worse. The reason why we don't notice these types of things right off the bat is because we as humans can't overcome that feeling of guilt when we quit things. Similar to the idea when you quit a gym membership halfway through the month and you know you don't have time to work out but you still feel bad when you do it. We can't shake that sense of failure that comes out of our body when we do things like quit or overcome that feeling or that position we put ourselves in that leaves room for criticism. And so we constantly tell ourselves it's okay to overcompensate, it's okay to try your best, because maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And 
maybe we'll actually succeed. It's about time, however, that we realize that overcompensation isn't something that's small and can be just swept under the rug. Especially for people my age. We are socially bound to th doing things like balancing school, balancing extracurriculars, volunteer work, or even just jobs in general, just to get into a good post-secondary school. If we're not strong extracurricular-wise, we need to make up for it in our academics. We are told to overcompensate, to meet the competitive average around the world, yet we still don't meet those standards over and over and over again. Eventually, one day, life's obsession with balance will tip. It'll become too much and things will fall off. And so, how do we recognize and deal with overcompensation? Moving forward, I want everyone to ask themselves these two questions. The first is, what motivates me to do what I do? Are you being driven by genuine passion or are you trying to prove something to someone or hide a flaw? You might be thinking about an activity that you do when you ask this question. Maybe your job, maybe a relationship, maybe an extracurricular or a sport. And I want you guys to keep that in mind for the next question. The second question I'm gonna ask you is, can you give it up? And you might be wondering, Michelle, what do you mean can I give it up? If I love something, I'm obviously not just going to let it go. But that's exactly what I think the wrong mentality is. Because if you truly had a good relationship with your activity, then you'd realize that when I ask this question, your first instinct would, it, would be that it's under the circumstance where it's hurting you instead of helping you. And so if you truly had a good relationship with your activity and you realize that it's not going well, you'd be more content with letting it go. And so if your response to that question is a very strong no, then it's likely that you're putting too much energy into that activity and actually overcompensating for something that you don't even realize. It's a feeling of guilt that motivates you to keep going. And now for some of us, we might refuse to give up the things that we've worked so hard for, and that's okay. But it's important to understand that sometimes trying too hard is a thing, and it could very well break you. You see, this year I realized that my fixation on debate was fueled by wanting to show others that I was good enough to be around them. It wasn't fueled by genuine interest or joy, rather a desire to prove my worth. And so to answer the first question of what motivates me to do what I do, I had effectively answered it wrong. I had worked so hard to get to where I was just to realize that I wasn't actually happy. The importance of asking yourself the second question of can you give up what you're doing is something that I cannot stress more, as it tests if you truly are focused on what's important or if you're pursuing a different path just because you're trying to hide a flaw. After I had essentially quit debate competitively this year, I found myself again. I started playing piano again, and now I'm happy with where I am in both piano and debate. I feel a lot better knowing that I can balance my own life scale the way that I saw fit. Quitting isn't a weakness. We are taught for decades to try and try and try again and to never give up. But the cost of life's perfectionism, to play the game of balance, is a cost that, frankly, I don't think is worth it. You see, the definition of overcompensating, simply put, is putting in extra effort to make up for a flaw. Let's go back to that flaw and see what we can do to make it better, instead of hiding it under the guise of overachieving in something new. In a world where we're controlled by life's perfectionism, let's flip that and take control back. Ask yourself the two questions of what motivates me to do what I do and can I give it up? To see if, firstly, you are overcompensating, but second, and more importantly, to slowly but surely reframe the narrative of giving up. Because sometimes it's the best thing to do. Thank you.